Let's discuss the differences between allograft and autograft in ACL surgery. One of the most important decisions to be made prior to an ACL reconstruction is the choice between allograft and autograft. But what exactly does that mean? Well, autograft means using tissue from your own body, while allograft means using tissue from a donor. Let's start by discussing the two most common autografts, the hamstrings and the patellar tendon. With a hamstrings autograft, your surgeon will make a small incision to harvest one or two of the hamstring tendons adjacent to the knee, usually the gracilis, the semitendinosus, or both. These tendons are then bundled together to create a stronger, thicker graft. Take a look here at an example of an ACL reconstruction using a hamstrings autograft. Now, it may seem that your knee might be weaker after taking out part of your hamstrings. Well, while there may be some slight differences that can be measured on special machines, extensive research has shown that you will notice little or no difference in strength, even if you're a professional athlete. Some tests even show that a hamstring graft can resist higher loads than your original ACL. Now, let's discuss the patellar tendon autograft. Again, your surgeon will need to make an additional incision on the front of your knee. From there, they take a strip of the patellar tendon with a small piece of bone on each end. Using these small sections of bone has some excellent advantages in terms of healing. Click here for an example of an ACL reconstruction using a patellar tendon autograft. Now, it may seem that taking bone and tendon from your knee may make it weaker or more prone to injury. The fact is that these problems are extremely rare in the hands of an experienced surgeon, and studies have shown that your strength will likely be nearly identical to the opposite knee after rehab. However, some patients have reported discomfort in the front of the knee, especially with kneeling or direct pressure. While this is a relatively rare occurrence, it is something to consider if you work a job or play a sport where this may be a factor. If those procedures don't sound like the right ones for you, or you'd prefer to avoid using your own tissue, we understand. That's where the allograft method comes in. Allograft surgery has been a tried and true method of ACL reconstructions for a long time. There are several advantages to this technique. Obviously, you'll have no additional incisions to worry about. Plus, allograft procedures are shorter, as the repair tissue is already there and waiting. Still, you may have concerns about placing tissue from another person in your body, you may be worried about infection or tissue rejection, or you may think it's just plain weird. The truth is that modern sterilization techniques are so thorough that potential problems are almost zero. Plus, there are strict donor selection and tissue processing guidelines that all help to keep you safe. Another concern is allografts have shown a slightly higher risk of re-rupture, especially in younger athletes. A potential cause of this problem may be related to the irradiation of the tissue during sterilization. However, newer biologic cleansing techniques have led to equally effective sterilization without the use of radiation. Choosing a donor that is matched to you in age and size can also lower the risk of re-rupture. For an example of an ACL reconstruction using an allograft, click here. As you've seen, both graft choices provide great options with very limited risk and years of research have shown that the difference in outcome and patient satisfaction is minimal. So if allograft surgery sounds right for you, or you want to keep it in-house with an autograph, you're more than likely to be happy with results. And if you missed those links earlier, here they are again. If you have any further questions, please leave those in the comments section below and keep coming back to Ready, Set, Med for all your medical needs.